Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a very tasty reading vlog. <laughs> okay, so today I'm reading three books and giving you my thoughts as I'm reading them, vlog style, and then I will give you my final ratings and reviews on these books. So those three books are Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Bastirica. Bastirica? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke and Succulent Prey by Rath James White. So I am going to be reading these three books and letting you know how they are and what my thoughts are. I don't know what my obsession is with cannibalism, but I love cannibalism in movies. I think it's just like the disgustingness of it. I don't even know what it is, but I've been wanting to read more books about cannibalism. So that's why I've been saving these three to read together for a vlog because I've heard great things about all of them. I guess I am now a cannibalism review channel. So I will be um, reviewing all of your cannibalistic experiences and fantasies and needs here on this channel. <laughs> So without further ado, let's just get into the vlog. Good morning! It's Wednesday morning. Last night I started Tender as the Flesh and I got about 50 pages in. Really, really liking this so far. It has that fucked up, bleak, depressing atmosphere that you guys know I just absolutely love. So in this book, we are following my freaking bookmark broke. Can you believe it? Ugh. So in this book, we are following, I forget his name, Marcos? Yeah, Marcos. He has a slaughterhouse farm. And um, in this slaughterhouse farm situation are humans being bred for consumption. Basically in this book a virus hits and it makes all animal meat poisonous to humans essentially. Humans are no longer eating animals and, and cannibalism has now been made normal. So they have humans that are specifically being bred for consumption, so they're being treated as animals are treated in slaughterhouses. So you can only fucking imagine. I'm like reading this and I'm like, what the hell? They like removed the human's vocal cords so they can't speak and they have them in these like pens and cages and they're milking humans, they're forcing them to breed for the slaughterhouse, like it's so fucked up. So um, yeah, I'm really really liking this so far a lot. And then I was questioning, I'm like, well how come they don't all just become a vegan? <laughs> but I think there's something to do with like the marketing, like people just started marketing the consumption of human flesh and it just like became a money scheme like a money thing you know so i feel like that's what's going on but i'm like i wouldn't eat a human i would just eat fucking vegetables <laughs> i don't know so yeah i posted a picture of this on instagram last night on my story and a lot of you guys are messaging me telling me i'm going to absolutely love this so I am going to read this morning. I was gonna like get ready and film a video later, but I just don't feel like it. I've been working overtime every single day and I also worked at my occupational therapy job on Saturday for extra money because I'm trying to pay off my medical bills and my credit card and I need a new freaking computer and I'm also moving soon so Justin and I have been looking for a place to rent and everything is super expensive so yeah on the weekends I've been doing like tours of places so yeah I haven't really had time to film I literally filmed a video on my lunch break the other day <laughs> so yeah you know everything is just so expensive and I can't stop buying books and horror shirts look at this one this is the faculty 
I love this movie. It's like a horror movie from the 90s about this faculty that gets possessed by aliens <laughs> and they're after these school, these high school students and I absolutely love this movie. Go watch it if you don't, if you've never seen it. And then I also got an Amityville horror shirt. This one's just super soft and comfortable and super cool. I don't really have many white shirts so I really like this one a lot. Okay hopefully you don't hear my fan in the background. If you do I apologize. So I am exactly at the 50% mark and I am about to start work. So I found the audiobook. I'm gonna listen, try to listen to the rest of the audiobook while I'm working today. Um, it's very short. It's only 200 pages. So I'm at the 100 page mark. So far this is just like really fucked up. Like I don't even know how else to explain it. Um, it took you literally step by step of the slaughterhouse and it's exactly what they do to animals except humans are in this slaughterhouse. So picturing it in my head is just like so disturbing and messed up and I don't know, it kind of just makes you think about how our animals are treated, um, where we get our meat from. You know, I was vegan for like many years and I I eat meat but only I'd say like twice a week because if I don't it flares up like my fibromyalgia symptoms really bad so why I started eating meat again but like this is like making me <laughs> want to throw up like it's making me never want to eat meat ever again in my life yeah like thinking and like picturing the humans in this slaughterhouse ugh. So now we're kind of getting into his family life a little bit more, his personal issues and what's been going on. And I'm curious to see where this goes. It's also beginning to touch on like the government and how the government is always doing something sketchy and everything's like a money scheme. And we will see. I'm going to listen to the audiobook while I'm working. Hopefully I don't get too many phone calls today. I feel like that's asking too much at my job so then I can listen to the audio. I will check in when I'm all finished and give you my final thoughts. Okay. Hello. Ah! I finished Tender as the Flesh and oh my god I have some thoughts. Okay. First of all this book gave me severe amounts of anxiety like I was trying to work and I'm like logged into the phone and I'm like typing and I'm listening to the audiobook and I was having an anxiety attack like full-blown having an anxiety attack freaking the fuck out about this book and someone would call me and I'm like oh, hello <laughs> I was in a panic I was sweating it, it was oh my god I have never felt so many emotions reading a book um except maybe when I read Survivor by JF Gonzalez I'll leave the vlog linked I had some emotions about that book as well sorry I look like a hot mess right now but this book it is very disgusting disturbing graphic gory really really fucked up and it made me feel depressed it made me feel angry it made me feel anxious it made me just I was on the edge of my seat like oh my god how is this gonna end um, because I heard the ending is depressing and it was um, so I was just like freaking out the entire time reading this book and I have never, like I said, this is one of the few books that I've felt so many emotions reading. One aspect I can see how maybe this is trying to say something about, um, you know, factory farming and where we get our meat from and animals and putting that into the perspective of humans. Like, yeah, it's fucking disgusting when you think about it as humans and cannibalism, but essentially what is happening in this book 
is exactly what is happening in real life to animals and you know with factory farming so also see how this book there's a bigger picture to this and I think it has to do with how the government values profit over its people and how you know the poor are benefiting the rich and the poor only exist to make the rich people richer and very fucking relatable isn't it and it's kind of like scary in a sense because I'm like hmm yeah I can see that <laughs> so this book kind of reminds me of 1984 by George Orwell in a sense which is one of my all-time favorite books and you see in this book they start using terms that aren't as like gross like instead of calling it human meat it's called special meat have these like little names and terms for the human meat and also you know they're seeing commercials where it's like I feed my family special meat you know and it's made normal in the society and you see everyone kind of conforming you see how easily large groups of people can normalize something um, by desensitizing what's actually going on using you know simplistic language by portraying things in the media and how people are easily influenced by the media i don't want to get into a huge political debate <laughs> because hi people already hate me but i feel like it's very evident just throughout history how easily people are manipulated especially with the media and just how humans like the lack of empathy and respect that humans have for one another and the whole like class stratification and it just it reminds me of a modern day take on a George Orwell book but make it extreme horror that's what you get with this book. It's a masterpiece. It's a fucking masterpiece. Best book that I read in 2022. 2022, this is how you write a book, okay? I feel like everyone that's written a book in 2022 suddenly forgot how to write a fucking book. This is how you do it, okay? Everyone go read this book. Okay, update. So my twin, McKay, <laughs> you guys know McKay. If you don't know McKay, please go subscribe. I'm gonna leave him linked down below. I'm gonna leave this video linked down below. So he has an entire video assessing this book and kind of breaking it down. It's a spoiler video where he breaks it down and kind of um, assesses what he thinks it means and the symbolism in this book. So please go check it out because I feel like I was pretty close. So like, I feel like him and I, like I was trying to say what he said in that video but he's so much smarter than I am he's like the smart twin so please go check that video out and subscribe it is pretty much spot on to what I think this book is about so he portrayed it and explained it so much better than I ever could so go watch it and if you're not subscribed what are you doing Good morning! It's now the next day. It's Thursday morning. I am filming on my phone in bed because I feel like shit. I have to start work in a half hour and I'm just like so dizzy because I'm getting my period any day now and I feel like shit. I'm so nauseous and dizzy. So yeah, I just didn't feel like getting my camera out <laughs> and doing all that. So I started reading Kin. I am about 35 pages in. Um, this book is only like 268 pages, but there's like a lot of words on the pages. Like they're wide pages with like a lot of words. So um, I did download the audio. I had a hard time finding it, so I had to use an Audible credit. 
um, just so I can listen along because I feel like puking. <laughs> So that's fun. But yeah, I'm really liking this so far. So basically, we're following this girl named Claire. And in the beginning of the book, she's like escaping from this family of cannibals. So she's like all bloody. She's like missing an eye. You know, they they violated her and tortured her. I guess she was with a group of friends and her boyfriend. And they, they tortured and murdered all of her friends and her boyfriend I believe so she's like the final girl and she um escapes and this man and his son find her and take her to this doctor and everyone in the town is kind of like afraid to do anything about it afraid to tell the police because in the past this murderous family of cannibals um has you know done the same thing to other people i think the family like found out who called the cops and so everyone's kind of afraid to say anything and afraid to do anything so that's kind of where we're at it's like this family of brothers and then they have a mom who's like bedridden and uh, yeah it's so fucked up <laughs> it's very like gory so far i guess not very but it's very um descriptive lots of like descriptive language um yeah just really good so far really well written i'm excited to see where this goes and i will update you around the 50 percent mark uh like i said i have to work and mckay told me about this movie called we are what we are i think that's the name of it i just rented it and it's about cannibals so i thought how fun would it be if i watched a movie about cannibals while reading cannibalism books hello so i'm currently working i'm listening to the audiobook for kin i am like almost halfway but i wanted to just do my update now so let me start off by saying the writing is really well done. It's really like descriptive writing, like I said, which normally I do not like, but I don't mind it in this book. I will say because the writing is kind of like flowery language, um, it does slow down the story a little bit because you're getting such in-depth descriptions of everything. So this is a very slow paced book and it's not like the heart pumping like oh my god I have to keep reading I need to know what's happening next like I'm not getting anxious reading this I'm not like super super like on the edge of my seat like I thought I would be. Um, it's super character driven you're getting in depth thoughts and descriptions of these characters especially the family the cannibalistic family it heavily reminds me of texas chainsaw massacre like so much reminds me of that a lot of people have compared this to brother by anya alborn but i i mean maybe like a similar vibe like similar family situation but brother is just amazing to me like i i loved the perspective that we were reading from in brother and it's it's different it's not the same book by any means um i don't think anything will ever be brother anything will be better than brother to me I just, I don't know why I love that book so fucking much. This one is good, but it's just like a little bit slower. There are some like violent, bloody, disgusting scenes and like rape and things like that that are taking place. And we're following the perspective of like multiple different people, like multiple people in this family. We're following the perspective of like our final girl. Um, they also got into the story of like another girl. And you're kind of just like reading from the perspective of lots of different characters. Also the man that rescued our final girl, her points of view, different things that are going on, and it's very, very character driven so far. So 
I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes and hopefully it picks up the pace a little hey, bit. Hello, it's Monday night. I'm sitting in a dark parking garage. I just got to physical therapy. I am going to give you my full review of Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke right here, right now, okay? I just found out I am moving in July. Justin and I found an apartment. I signed the lease today and I'm stressed about it because the rent is so expensive. Like the price of everything is just so fucking expensive. They said that their rent increased 18% in the last year, which is fucking insane. Like normally it's like 5%, 10% maybe at the most, 18%. Yeah, there's no way that we can afford that. <laughs> <laughs> so we signed a year lease and then we're gonna assess the situation because it's already tight I, I I'm stressed I have so much anxiety and if I need another endometriosis surgery it's gonna have to be out of pocket fifteen thousand dollars so yeah I really hate being an adult anyways I finished so I wasn't reading at all this weekend because I was busy dealing with adult things. Then um, today while I was working my mandatory overtime, <laughs> I was able to finish listening to the audiobook for Kin and I'm kind of disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I know everyone raves about this book and I feel like I am the minority here. Um, this woman just parked right next to me blasting music and looked right through my soul <laughs> and I would never be caught dead vlogging in public like I would not be caught dead sitting here talking to myself in the car anyways Ken um I was a little bit disappointed I think I'm gonna go with three stars it was very slow paced and I think the audiobook was a mistake for me because there were so many characters that just kind of came out of nowhere. And it was a lot like a lot of POV ch switching like mid chapter and you had to figure out who you were even reading about. And the audio kind of confused me a little bit. And I think that's probably my fault, but it was very slow paced, very like character driven um descriptive language it reminded me of like a Stephen King book which that's not bad you know Stephen King's a great writer this book was really well written but it was just so slow paced that I started to not care especially since I kind of started to get lost with um who the characters were I started to like not care like people were dying and I was just confused so this might just be a me thing but I was expecting something like fast paced heart pumping like crazy gory like a gorier version of Brother by Anya Alborn and it was not that I still much prefer Brother by Anya Alborn that one's very like psychological horror um this one was just like a slow paced horror. Like if Texas Chainsaw Massacre would have like continued after Sally survived and is like on the truck at the end, that's this book. But I don't know. I don't really think it was my style personally, but it was a good book. So I think I'm going to go with like a 3.5. Okay, so I just started Succulent Pride. Like, I just opened the book up. And the first page is a recipe on how to make breasts in white wine sauce. It tells you the ingredients and how to cook these women's breasts in this wine sauce. And I'm obsessed. This is hilarious. I already love it. <laughs> this is... From what I hear, it only gets worse, better. I don't even know. Hilarious so far. Hello, it's been a few days. I've been dealing with some shit. My life is a mess. I was like, oh, I'm gonna film like some B-roll footage. Well, no, because I haven't been doing anything but not sleeping and having panic attacks. <laughs> oh, my life. I have a stalker 
and I don't want to publicly talk about it. I've like talked to some of you guys on Instagram about it, but I don't want to like say anything else other than that. Um, so it's terrifying. Um, so I have that going on. Just stunning, amazing. Okay. So I am 34 pages into Succulent Prey and what the actual fuck is this book? Like, what is this? <laughs> it's a cannibalistic erotica. Like, I feel like I'm reading like cannibal fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This guy is a boxer, apparently. Look at, I'm going to show you his picture. This man is a boxer who writes extreme horror cannibal erotica. <laughs> we, we love a businessman, am I right? Um, okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this book. I'm following this guy named Joe, and in the beginning of the book, he is like younger. It's like 10 years prior and he is in a bathtub being tortured by someone someone's like cutting him open and like drinking his blood <laughs> and then we fast forward to present day 10 years later and he is a cannibal he discovered that he loves murdering and eating people so he is going he's like a sex addict like he's obsessed with masturbating to cannibalistic shit on the internet. He's like in therapy, they're doing like painting and he keeps fantasizing about like killing the model and eating her. <laughs> and then he goes to his sex addicts anonymous group and the stories that they are sharing in this group, OMG so graphic and then he's there like yeah i fantasize about like ripping people open and eating their flesh <laughs> there is so much gore and depictions of sexual acts this book is like straight up pornography so far like <laughs> the amount of times i have read in detail about this man masturbating and i'm only on page 34 the descriptions of penises of breasts of bodily fluids bodily functions oh my god what am i reading i literally feel like i'm reading like an erotica book that i bought like off the shelf at a grocery store but make it gory with cannibals i i don't even know what the fuck is this book what is this book? good morning it's friday the 13th my favorite day or days of the year in this case i think it's the only friday the th friday the 13th of the year <sighs> terrifying i know so i am almost at the 50% mark of this book. I'm like just shy of the 50% mark. I'm gonna give you my update now um, before I go to work. So, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know what to say. I have to like formulate my thoughts because this is just wild. So we're following this guy, Joe, like I said. He, you know, like I was saying, he was assaulted by a serial killer when he was um younger i think they said he's he was eight um and now present day he thinks that you know he is a cannibalistic serial killer so you'll you follow him he's in college now he's like going to psychology classes on you know killers and he's asking all these like weird questions and everyone in the class thinks he's a freak because he is so he basically thinks that if you are a serial killer or cannibal or both whatever it must be inherited somehow by someone else so he thinks that the killer that he got away from when he was eight when he was drinking his blood he thinks that it transmitted to him like he thinks that this illness or virus or whatever transferred to him and now he is trying to stop the infection or whatever he calls it in the book 
So he is now on this quest to stop himself from progressing into a serial killer. Am I making any sense? So that's like the plot of this book. And now he also finds this girl that he's interested in and he doesn't want to kill her, but he has urges to kill her. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, this book, <laughs> I was not expecting how sexually explicit it is. Like, I swear, if I have to read about this man masturbating one more fucking time, like he's always talking about his monster, you know, his penis, and he's constantly masturbating. Like, oh my God, ew. Like, I do not want to read about this anymore. <laughs> like, every time he sees a woman, he gets an erection and he goes home and masturbates to the thought of eating her flesh. Like, not having sex with them, just like eating them raw. So <laughs> this book is extremely graphic, duh, it's extreme horror. But I like I have never read such sexual content. And this is an extreme horror book. Like I would classify this as like cannibalistic smut, cannibalistic erotica at this point. Like it's it got a little repetitive like it was just constantly he's meeting people he you know gets an erection he masturbates he thinks about eating their flesh and it was just like over and over and i was like okay we fucking get it like i don't want to read about his semen anymore okay now that he's on his little quest it's picking up a little bit um is this a masterpiece no, not by any means. Am I somehow intrigued by this cannibalistic smut? Yeah, I kind of am. Like I want to know what find I want to find out what's going on. So, I mean, it's okay. It's keeping my attention so far. We will see. People are messaging me on Instagram and they're like, "I can't believe you're reading that book." And I'm like, "Really?" Because I can. Hello, so I did zero reading over the weekend. I'm just like super stressed. I have to put some of my groceries away. Maybe I will talk to you while I do that. My health is just terrible. Um, so basically I found this out in February and I kind of briefly mentioned it a little bit on Instagram, but I found out that I have a super rare strain of candida infection like in my body like it's just a whole situation so you know like naturally you have candida in your body and there's different strains of it and it lives in your gut and it's normal and it's healthy but when it becomes out of balance that's when you have an infection so i have this rare strain of candida in my body and I've had it since February, so it's going on like four months now. This is like the third round of antifungal medication that has failed. I can't get rid of it. Before you comment down below or message me telling me, oh, you need to take garlic and probiotics and this and that. Like I literally do everything you could possibly fucking imagine and my body's just failing me. It's because I have endometriosis, like my immune system is weak, so it can't fight off like infections and things like that so it's just been rough like, people that really like get this type of infection are usually like HIV patients cancer patients with like really really suppressed immune systems so I don't really know what the situation is but apparently like people have died from this infection people end up in the hospital like it's really scary so I've been just like a whole ball of stress and anxiety over this whole situation um working with my specialist. She's been treating me like over the phone. I literally have to overnight ship my bodily secretions <laughs> through FedEx like every two weeks. It's just so bad and the results keep coming back positive every time. My medications keep failing. I feel like shit all the time. It's terrible. So that's why like I was like I'm gonna film b-roll. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm like nope I can't. So yeah. Also have been eating zero sugar um, zero gluten, which I don't eat gluten anyways. Um, so yeah, zero sugar, zero gluten. I've been limiting dairy 
and basically anything that tastes good i can't fucking eat it so yeah anyways i went to the grocery store i have to put some things away i meal prepped like all day today so that's why i just wanted to pop on here and explain my situation because i really wanted to finish reading succulent prey and i couldn't because i've been stressed and cooking ew okay first of all these sparkling waters delicious peppermint watermelon basil berry these are the aura bora brand zero grams of sugar it is the cleanest like sparkling water delicious love them this one is lemongrass coconut this one's really good and then this one's cactus rose they also have like a lavender cucumber one but it was out of stock so this is my dinner that i prepped it's called egg roll in a bowl do you see this it's ground chicken cabbage green and purple cabbage carrots onion garlic and then i just threw some ginger some uh coconut aminos some rice wine vinegar and salt pepper and red pepper flakes and sesame seeds delicious absolutely delicious love it that's my dinner and for lunch i literally just cut up like a bunch of bell peppers cherry tomatoes shallots garlic and that was it and then i put some salt pepper basil in there roasted it in the oven and then i'm going to be eating it over i got some packets of like quinoa and brown rice because like realistically i'm not going to be boiling quinoa on my lunch break so that's going to be my lunch and then i'm just going to drizzle it with some olive oil and lemon juice and apple cider vinegar um yeah i'm gonna put my groceries away and then hopefully i will have some time to lay down and read good morning i literally just woke up like mm, yes she's flawless stunning <laughs> yeah obviously i just woke up so i finished succulent prey last night and oh my god this fucking book <laughs> so you know the the problem that i had with this is that it was like a little too repetitive i'm like we get it you like masturbating you like eating people like we get it <laughs> and then it got to the plot around the 50 percent mark where he's like searching for a cure for himself and um from there things got a little crazy they went on this like road trip situation there's a barbecue scene in here <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say um, so the last half, you know, I was intrigued by the plot. I wanted to find out what was going on. It was just like a little bit repetitive. And then I found myself like kind of skimming through certain parts because I'm like, okay, 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 I get it, you know? So is this a masterpiece? No. Was this interesting? Yes. Did I enjoy this? It was okay. <laughs> you know what? It gave me some sort of enjoyment entertainment i found myself laughing would i recommend this not necessarily unless you like really fucked up extreme horror that's like super super graphic super super weird and um i guess those two things i don't even know i think i'm gonna go with a three star for this one consciously i don't think i can give it anything more like it was okay it was fucking wild but like am i ever gonna reread this probably not so i'm actually going to be selling this one um but yeah three stars i would recommend if you are like obsessed with extreme horror this might be your jam. So in this vlog, we had a three star, a 3.5, and a five star masterpiece. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely let me know if you're going to be reading any of these books, if you have read them, if you liked them, and what you want to see me read in the future. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!